Since Helldivers 2 took the gaming world by storm, Eagle Eye players have begun combing through every corner to find hidden bits of lore, jokes left behind by the designers, and references to the media franchises that inspired the Helldivers universe. You don't even need to have played the game to guess that Helldivers 2 takes heavy inspiration from the 1997 cult classic film Starship Troopers. If you have even a passing familiarity with the movie, it will be abundantly clear that the setting and tone of much of the game's lore takes more than a little bit from the Paul Verhoeven film and the book that inspired it. These brave men and women will defend Quilasha from any insect aggression. Parallels can be drawn between a variety of things in Helldivers and Starship Troopers. The most obvious example is the propaganda in the game, which takes the same absurdist and over-the-top tone and rhetoric as that in Starship Troopers. The societies of both the film and game are divided into tiers of citizenship, and the primary way one moves up in the world is by serving in the military. Both versions of Earth are also satirical, hyper-capitalist, fascistic societies at war with a race of intelligent swarming insects. Plus, the weapons and armor in Helldivers 2 also bear a striking similarity to those seen in Starship Troopers. Lastly, the most direct reference to Starship Troopers can be found on the galaxy map in Helldivers 2, which features a world called Klendoth 2. This is a clear reference to the name of the homeworld of the bugs in Starship Troopers, Klendathu. Starship Troopers isn't the only franchise from which Helldivers 2 draws satirical inspiration. It also shows clear parallels to Warhammer 40,000, the tabletop, video game, and possibly soon-to-be TV show, which features a hyper-militarized fascistic society and satirizes, or pays homage to, depending on your perspective, just about every trope to ever exist in science fiction. The contributions of Warhammer 40k to the Helldivers 2 universe have much more to do with the visual aesthetics of the universe rather than in the lore of the game itself, though. The most obvious reference is the name of the faction of bug enemies that players face off against. They are called the Terminids, which obviously sounds like the Tyranids from Warhammer 40k. These creatures are similar to the Terminids in their insectoid design and their swarming hive-mind-like nature. Another more subtle reference some players may have missed comes in the form of one of the armor sets in Helldivers 2. The DP-40 Hero of the Federation armor seems to take inspiration from not one, but two different military units in Warhammer 40k. The proportions and shape language bear striking similarities to the 40k universe's Imperial Guard, while the Skull with Wings logo in the center of the chest piece is pretty much a one-for-one -one ripoff of the Guard's logo. The armor's color scheme brings to mind arguably 40k's most famous unit, the Space Marines, with its deep blue and accents of gold. Would it really be a work satirizing the absurdities of runaway capitalism if it didn't have some insane marketing for bonkers products well beyond the boundaries of even our most free market laissez-faire societies? Well, it's subtle and often hidden, but Helldivers 2 has this as well. Throughout the game, players can find posters, billboards, and various other forms of visual advertising. They're usually half-destroyed or torn into pieces, but if one looks closely, they might discover something kind of odd. The Great Pyramids, yes, those pyramids, the famous ones in Egypt, are for sale. Not only are they for sale, but they've been converted into luxury apartments. In a truly capitalist society with no limits or regulations, nothing is sacred, not even the greatest and most historically important works of human civilization. The universe of Helldivers 2 makes this abundantly clear. Players just need to look a little bit below the surface. Speaking of things that might be indicative of a runaway capitalist hellscape, there are absurd and exploitative terms of service that no one actually bothers to read in Helldivers 2. These can be found at the end of the brief tutorial training mission the player undertakes on Mars before being sent off to the front lines. I don't think that the average person likely reads that whole document. Yeah. Peel off to the right before picking up your Helldivers cape and you will see a black wall covered in text. If one looks closely, you can see these are the official terms of one's enlistment in the Helldivers. Some of the more absurd elements include a martyrdom payment as compensation for immediate family members if a Helldiver is killed in combat, and the fact that reading the contract both counts as agreeing to it and violating it at the same time. Sedition or treason, including treasonous thoughts, is of course also strictly prohibited, as it is in all places under Super Earth's watchful stewardship. While the original game is far less popular, Helldivers 2 is obviously a sequel, and there are things one might only notice if they have played or read up on the original Helldivers. One example of this can be found on the Galaxy Map, where the world of Cyberstan is located in one of the game's outermost sectors. This happens to be the homeworld of one of the original game's main enemy factions, the Cyborgs. 
While the cyborgs have yet to make an official appearance in the second game, unlike fellow returning enemies the Terminids, the presence of their home planet on the galaxy map has led to no shortage of speculation about their return. I wonder what the automatons plan on doing with all the cyborgs. Now that I think about it, I wouldn't put it past them to be working together. The most common theory among players is that the automatons, often just called the bots, are actually tools or evolutions of the cyborgs, and not an entirely new faction unto themselves. Thus, the conclusion is that the bots are not pushing for Super Earth, but rather for Cyberstan. They could be attempting to free their masters from imprisonment and servitude in the planet's mines. If the cyborgs are the true goal is anyone's best guess, though there are certainly plenty of reasons to think they will. This is mostly speculation, but it seems like a good guess at this point in time. Then there's rumors of a return of the Illuminate, who also made their debut in the original Helldivers. But don't worry about them or their blue lasers, folks. Sightings of that alien race are merely the work of dissidents among your ranks, according to Super Earth's broadcasts, at least. Helldivers 2 is a game filled with extreme amounts of blood, gore, violence, and extremely dark satire. That being said, the experience is also specifically designed to be funny. Players can ragdoll hilariously when thrown by explosions, get hit with friendly fire in seemingly absurd and impossible ways, and be swarmed by so many enemies at once that the only thing they can do is laugh. Helldivers 2 is not without scripted moments of levity either. On colder planets, namely Vandalon 4, it is possible for the players to do something outright innocent and pure, have a snowball fight. The sky may be filled with super destroyers raining terror from above, and there might be ten squads of automatons just behind you over that hill, but darn it if there is not ample time to stop for a childhood joy shared the world over. At least in places where it snows. Mass Effect is a franchise beloved by millions of players the world over. It has spawned tons of memes, quotable moments, and fan theories. One quote arguably stands far above the rest for those who have played Mass Effect, however. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. It appears the developers of Helldivers 2 are also fans of this memorable line. Head into the in-game shop and you might just catch a reference to the popular trilogy in Helldivers 2. While browsing, players can see fake customer reviews of the armor that is for sale in the store at that given moment. One of these reads as follows, quote, I'm redacted and this is my favorite product in the Acquisition Center. Any Mass Effect fans playing the game who are fortunate enough to spot the Easter egg will surely get a smile and maybe even a laugh out of it. After all, it is the most memed moment in the franchise's history. This one is technically from the game's marketing, but it's so much fun that we'll make an exception. Helldivers, much like your favorite action movie heroes, love their weapons. That's presumably why Helldivers 2 decided to celebrate the launch of the explosive Democratic Detonation War Bond by reenacting one of the most memeable moments in action, the Taken 3 fence jump. At one point in the movie, Liam Neeson hops a fence during an on-foot pursuit, and the film inexplicably cuts over a dozen times in less than 10 seconds. The result is a hilariously incomprehensible mess of grunting, hopping, and flipping. It's meant to look cool, but it ends up being basically everything you don't want your action movie to look like, especially if you want folks to be able to follow what's happening on screen. The Helldivers 2 version is just as frantic and oddly pathetic, as the armored warrior takes a pretty nasty tumble while escaping from an aggressive bug. It's an extremely deep-cut reference, but connoisseurs of bad 2000s action definitely saw and appreciated Arrowhead's commitment to the bit. At least this Helldiver got to pose with an explosion behind him after all that fence climbing, so it's not quite as awkward as the original clip. Take that, Liam Neeson!